Danny, we're here at the book launch, of course, the Quality Street Gang, and you were a huge part of that. I mean, can you tell us your earliest memories of you know playing in that team? Playing in that team with players such as Davey Hay, Davey Hay, who's here today, Josh Conley, Ken Leash, how do you think it was? I mean, we were just the start of, unknowingly, of a, of a very good team, or of very good players. And just very thankful that I was involved in it because of Mr. Steen and Sean Fallon. As a young player coming through, you're coming through the doors at Celtic Park, of course, and then you get to train with the Lisbon Lions. I mean, what was that like? At the time, it was very nerve wracking. I just remember we used to train here at Celtic Park, and our warm up used to be four laps of this park, and I was at the back of the trip. I'd be 17, Kenny would be 16 or 18 and 17 or whatever, and Big Billy McNeil was at the front. And we were just talking to each other, thinking, that's Big Billy, yes. You know, we didn't actually meet them. We met them before it, but the fact, after watching European Cup, and Ken and I were part-time for a year, now we were on the park, running around the track in this squad, because everybody's trained together. And we Jimmy's there, and they're all there. And just after the first lap, you're thinking, I'm not going to wake up. You know, this is just so surreal. And the, the players took us into their fold and wrapped a big blanket over us. And, and from there on in, looked after us over the next two or three years. You mentioned it there, Danny, but was it always a case like the Lisbon Lions, like Billy McNeil, they're always happy to give you words of advice when you needed them? No, they weren't, they, they weren't there to give us advice. We just trained with them. And if, if you wanted to ask them anything, but I think Kenny and I and some of the young boys that I mentioned were a bit still in awe to ask them for advice. We just trained with them and we Bertie, Jim Craig, Bill McNeil, Bobby Murdoch would talk to you. You know, talk to you about the family and everything else and you, you got to know them better and you, you watched them in training. And what a great, obviously a bunch of guys, but we learned from that. Unknowingly, you know, with Jim Craig, I, I unknowingly picked up tips from Jim Craig, Tommy Gemmel, and at the time, as a left midfield player, and then suddenly I grew into a fullback, not due to the fact that I watched Tommy Craig, Jim Craig, and Bill McNeil, I also watched Bobby Murdoch, Jimmy Johnson, but all the guys, and some of the stuff just stuck to me. He's became known, of course, as the Quality Street Gang, but from those early days, did, did you really get a sense of how, how good this team could be? No, no, because it was so enjoyable. I mean, we never actually thought, I'm going to make it, he's going to make it, because in football, even today, everybody thinks they're going to make it. At that time, we were just happy to be here enjoying the facilities, which weren't great. Barrowfield has been about for years, and we just grew to love it. The players were just, the players made it, and Mr. Steen obviously made it with his, uh, his coaching, and Sean Fallon, his partner in crime, was, was great. Just a, a whole family atmosphere, as soon as you walked in the door. I'm going to ask you a difficult question here, Danny. Was, is there one player in particular you really enjoyed playing with? I always enjoyed playing with the uh, wee Jimmy because, as I said, we used to train with the first team and I wasn't a fullback at the time, thankfully. But you play against wee Jimmy, maybe, and it was just a nightmare. And I hated playing against him because he always roasted me. He just kept roasting me. And, and I'd, I'd be about 17, 18 at the time. It's true enough, you, you, you try and kick him. You know, and sometimes you're lucky, or sometimes he was unlucky, I caught him. But he just got up and grabbed your head and got on with it. And I, again, that's teaching me, don't be so stupid. And don't be tackling people of his ability. Bubba Lance, his pace, 
yeah, I need to stand off them. You know, I, I'm learning these things without actually knowing what I'm learning. And after training with these guys and playing with these guys and listening to Big Brother McNeil, ordering the people about and training and talking to people, you're learning from them, but you're not aware of what you're learning. And when you take it all in, when you look back like said, today, I'm so appreciative of what these players did. And they weren't trying to teach you anything. They were just doing the natural thing. And I learned so much from them. As did Kenny, as did Vic Davis and Paul Wilson. But playing in the first team, was there any particular player, though, when you, you first made the grade that you thought, I'm really glad he's in the same team as me? Well, I think the fact that I came through with Kenny, and Kenny got into the first team maybe a year before me, and he was maybe, maybe established, maybe not in the first team. But the fact I knew him better than the first team, it gave me some satisfaction to know that Kenny was playing up front and him and I had an understanding with each other. And it made me feel more comfortable. So I think playing with Kenny over the years that he was here was a terrific for me. I made him, I made him, I made him not a bad player. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put that in. <laughs>